After Devstream 181, we have had our first look at Kume. The new Warframe, I believe it's the 58th Warframe, don't quote me on that one. The reason it's called the Five Fates of is down to her abilities that... Well, I'm reading this and noticing her passive of... Shadow's Trinity is missing. This is where one of her weapons deals a random status chance for, quote-unquote, a duration. The reason it's called the Five Fates, I'm assuming is down to the passive and the four abilities. Don't really know all too much yet, but we do know that she will be coming... Yeah, I can just scroll up for this one, can't I? October 2nd, rather than make you wait throughout the video to find out when... Warframe's Kumai and the Five Fates update will be coming October 2nd to all platforms. The Five Fates, well, you can kind of see it if I move this around a bit. Um, she's kind of a dice-based frame. How the rolling of the dice works, they weren't all too particular about, but it will determine how her abilities work for these three dice she spins. Because if we go down... You can see, her first ability, Kumihimo, or however that's actually going to be pronounced, there was, I did watch it and the pronunciations were there, but I'm going to butcher them along the way, I do apologise for this. Weave the threads of destiny, enemies who touch the threads suffer a random elemental status chance. And then it gets into, a roll of triple sixes creates a thread that inflicts one of every elemental status elements. Anybody who hits that will be hit by every element. Second ability, Umikuji, uh, you have to complete the challenge that pops up to earn a decree. Rolling the triple sixes will give you one without having to complete the challenge, but it determines... This is also another one that is determined by, is the challenge fixed, or is it a random challenge every time? The third ability, Omamaru. She surrounds herself in charms that will turn incoming hits into healing rather than damage, but the number of them is determined by the dice roll. But rolling triple sixes will give you invulnerability for the duration of the ability. Fourth ability, Bunraku, will dangle enemies like a puppet in front of you. Rolling the dice determines the amount of status effect that they will suffer. Triple sixes will inflict it to enemies behind her, which it should do that anyway. Triple sixes shouldn't add the ability to cast the ability behind you. It should just increase the status effect it will suffer instead of increasing how it works. Her signature weapons also look pretty amazing, actually. The Higasa... They referred to it as the Umbrella Gun. If there's no idle animation for her using it as an umbrella, I'm going to be disappointed. I really am. The idle animation for this weapon should turn it into an actual umbrella, otherwise referring to it as an Umbrella Gun seems kind of silly, but it works really well, because getting kills with its primary burst fire will charge its secondary beam based fire mode, as well as aiming down sight will summon the umbrella itself that acts as a kind of shield that also charges the alternate fire mode. That one was weird. Kills with the... well basically it's kills and blocks will charge the beam and it does look like it's going to... I'm actually looking forward to this. There is a few other ones we'll get onto soon enough but possibly my favourite because the other signature weapon, Amanata, roll her dice with every 30 swings of this weapon. Rolls of 1 to 5 grant one buff. A roll of 6 grants all the buffs at once. Actually reading this on their website made it look sound much better than they did when they kind of played that video demonstrating it because... That just said, uh, rolling the dice, which is of course the frame's ability, will increase the buffs. Which made it sound like it's one of those in her hands kind of perk. But no, it's the weapon itself, which is a polearm. Every 30 swings of it, it will 
roll a dice that will grant an extra buff. Probably my favourite of all of it. I've mentioned it before. That Volt skin looks absolutely amazing. They did go into a little bit more detail showing off the Volt Deluxe skin. I don't think the Signa was really necessary. In the slightest, the frame itself, just the way they have worked him and the way that he's looked in concept art and everything else, that's going to look really amazing. Nova, I didn't see coming. That was one that they've snuck in without really telling us much about. Her deluxe skin, same deal. I didn't think they were going to do three deluxe skins, considering there's the Stanax one as well, that will be coming with a scythe skin to go on any scythe instead of just his scythe, which is a great touch. Um, not a great touch with all of the souls and ghosts and everything at his feet, though. But Nova's deluxe skin, that, that looks absolutely amazing. And then we get on to the unforeseens from this, which to be fair, if you had a quick look at this website, you wouldn't actually realise was there, but no, no, no. There is the Arsenal upgrades that will be bringing new arcanes, new augments and new mods. The augments are for these and will be available from the Steel Path, I do believe they said. Don't know why it doesn't just mention what it is there, but... Three new galvanized mods. Okay. The new game mode, the Shrine Defense. That is because the whole Five Fates thing will be introducing a new mission type where, well, it's basically all infested based. The Kuma in the Five Fates itself, though, again, it wasn't something that is really covered in this. It was a little bit, but it also wasn't at the same time in the trailer that they did. There will be a new kind of storyline in Cetus. Yes, that's right. We all knew this was coming. It was going to be based in Cetus. That is going to introduce Kumai to us. Kume. Sorry. And there will be a new mission type because, well, the um, infested are basically now attacking the planes. And Cetus. As well as the ghouls. And it's going to be all based around that. And we'll be bringing you infested, the infested Oni, which is a nice touch. Then again, this entire update seems to be based around a certain kind of, I'm not going to put it as culture, but let's just put it as a certain area of the planet that they happen to be in right now. <laughs> Arsenal upgrades do look pretty good, but the new Incarnans have been confirmed as well. Finally. They've already said they're going to be releasing five new Incarnans and we all kind of had an idea of what they were going to be because it was leaked quite some time ago but it's going to be the Sestra, the Dera, the Okna, the Sakaurus and the Cybrus. Like all Incarnans these tend to go on every single variation of these five weapons. Primes, Dex, you know, Cybrus, Dex. All of them, it tends to go on. And hopefully that's something that we can still do, but I'm looking forward to this because, hmm, will it go on the Maradetron? Would be the only real question from all of these weapons because they're all pretty decent weapons, to be fair. But more importantly, the new invasion missions, invasion mission and the defense mission, kind of, coincide with each other will be the new player friendly mission that would be the new players because there's a whole new new players experience that's going to apparently come in this where you will get Kume and her weapons as well as a new resource yes that's right new resource so to slow down people from actually getting the frame too quickly new resources have been added learn more about her lore and a Steel Path variant will be coming with this. We also got our first look at the Site 09, which is a complete pile of baloney because we've actually seen this frame before because it's one of the Hex Syndicate members. Oh, the proto frame is, and the normal one's just going to have a mask over the actual face. Confirmed, his weapon is going to be an exalted weapon. Which is great. I was hoping they were going to do that, but the weapon you see him with, 
it's going to be an exalted one even though they kind of don't show it here this will be the frame that comes in warframe 1999 of course so there is a lot of different things that are going to change and everything else over time with him so moving on coming this october they did give it a date i cannot find it anywhere at the moment the first playable demo you know the demo from the tenocon it looks like they are going to allow us to play that demo that they played at Tenocon ourselves. Completing it will earn the Protocol Longsword skin. I was hoping they were going to turn that into an actual weapon, but Warframe 1999 will be coming first as a playable demo this October. I want to say it was about the 16th. I will be going back and finding out, however. Yep. October the 16th, get a glimpse into Warframe 1999 and earn the Protocol Longsword skin. It looks like it's the demo from Tenocon. It kind of... I mean, it doesn't say it doesn't. But it doesn't say it does. They're not, not really going too much into it, but it looks, considering how much was actually showing and everything else it's going to be the demo from tenocon that we're going to be able to actually play through how much of it we'll have to wait until october the 16th once this demo has gone and warframe 1999 oh, is actually yeah, released the longsword skin oh, hey, the protocol longsword skin needs to be locked away and, and not be obtainable ever again meaning only the people who actually played the demo not bad for the short amount of time it'll be out for, because it's only out for about two months, will be the ones who have it. So when you see somebody playing who has this skin, you know they played the demo. Whether they'll do that or not, I really doubt. It'll probably be available some other way, but I'm hoping they'll do that, because it's been way too long since they've actually gone and done something like that, that people will actually do things to get because they are exclusive instead of it eventually making its way into the game which everything will eventually work its way into the game apart from the prime access stuff would love to see that but this demo ah, i kind of can't wait to have a look around all the stuff that they didn't show us from the War warframe 1999 demo coming this october 16th but with that this has gone on entirely way too long so we'll leave this off here for now thanks for watching and i'll catch you next time <laughs>